Welcome back to the Force Feed. In today's gaming news, Final Fantasy XIV enters early access, weekend deals, and the absurd Origin bundle, and World of Warcraft may eventually go free to play. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show. Force here with your day's gaming news. First up today, Final Fantasy XIV has finally entered its early access phase, which means you can pre-order and get access to the game right now. Anyone who pre-ordered Final Fantasy XIV now has early access to the game, a full three days before its launch. Just enough time to hit level cap and laugh at all of your newbie friends. So if you have yet to pre-order Final Fantasy XIV but you'd like to get into the early access, you can do so at any point between now and when the game actually launches. As for myself, well, I tried the open beta weekend, I played the game for a couple of hours, and that's probably all I'm gonna play of it. Now look, this isn't a final judgment, this is not a review of Final Fantasy XIV. All I'm saying is that for the couple hours I played, it wasn't enough to keep me going. But that's just my personal preference. I know some of you out there love the game, and kudos to you, fantastic, have a glorious time. I just won't be there having a good time with you. Uh, next up in news, we've got some fantastic deals, not only some weekend deals, but also there's the Origin Humble Bundle that I didn't tell you about last week that you still have a few days left to check out. This weekend's Steam deals include 50% off Don't Starve and 75% off The Witcher 2. The Origin Bundle also has three days remaining, letting you pay what you want for Dead Space, Burnout Paradise, Crisis 2, Mirror's Edge, Dead Space 3, and Medal of Honor. If you pay more than the $5 average, you'll also get Battlefield 3. Yeah, yeah, Steam weekend deals, whatever. What about this Origin deal? First of all, I'm sorry for not telling you about this before. You still have three days left if you'd like to check this out. But holy hell, in terms of like value, this is probably one of the best sales I've ever spe seen. You can spend a single dollar and get some amazing high quality titles. Or if you spend above the average, which right now is just below $5, you're also gonna get those additional games. It's, it's rather ridiculous. It's pretty unbelievable. The greatest thing too is that if you hate Origin, they're given Steam keys for it as well, which by the way, Kudos to them for offering that to their competitor, offering you guys to play the game on the competitor service. It's nuts. Uh, you should probably spend money and get this deal and get some of these games if you haven't already and if you're even slightly interested in a single one of these games, let alone the entire package. A single one of these games you can buy for five bucks is totally worth the deal. All right, and last up in news today, we're gonna be talking about World of Warcraft because it appears, as I'm sure many people anticipated that the game may eventually go free to play in the future. They just have to find the right moment. Speaking with Polygon, World of Warcraft's lead designer Tom Chilton said, for Blizzard it makes sense to go free to play at some point, but a lot of the risk is in making that transition. You hear stories about developers going free to play and getting double the numbers of players, but you don't always know it works out that way and how long it stays that way. We really don't know what the rate is before people drop off and lose interest. So we've been talking about MMOs quite a bit through the last bit of the Force Feeds. We've been talking about subscription fees and, and hybrid models and, and in-game shops and all sorts of stuff like this. I don't think anyone's too surprised at the notion that World of Warcraft may eventually go free to play. Now, as it was said in the article, it's about finding the right time and it's also it's about the long term. We do hear stories about developers going free to play and doubling their income and doubling their player base, but what we don't know yet is how that pays out over the course of five, 10 years. The free to play model, relatively speaking, in the MMO space is still, it's fairly new. In the long haul, down the road, how does the player base sustain itself? Do people continue to stay interested in these free to play games or with the cash shop and with all these in-game hooks trying to constantly spend you money and nagging at you here and there, saying you can't go into this dungeon or you can't get past this level or you can't get the best gear unless you spend X, Y, and Z dollars on X, Y, and Z item, does that nag the players and drop the player base off because people are just tired of that sort of a thing? So it'd be interesting to see when and if World of Warcraft does eventually go free to play. I expect it to happen. How it's going to happen, what their pricing model is gonna be, I don't know. So I guess we'll just have to see, and it looks like Blizzard is waiting to see as well how these other games hold up in the long term before they make that decision to their cash cow that is World of Warcraft. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for today's episode of the show. As always, thank you so much for watching. Once again, <laughs> this has been Force, and you have just been Force Fed. God, I'm too tired to do this today. I can't. I can't, you guys look up your own gaming news. You go to Joystick, Game Informer, and Reddit, uh, Eurogamer, 
Th there you go. That's where you get your gaming news. You don't need it from me. What, what value do I add?